from Minnesota Rugby, obviously, and Sean Lerner-Smith, head coach, some of you have been in the other presentations. Yes, if you could get that going, Nick, that'd be great. Um, Bob, there's a camera. Uh, today's presentation is building a program for team culture. Um, I'd like to know, when you picked this topic, when you said you wanted to come into this, give me a little bit about what you thought you might accomplish or what you would like to accomplish or learn or get out of this. Have we thought about that? Looking to see what some of the key uh, ingredients are in fostering an environment of positive Talk about the environment, the ingredients, sort of recipe, get up there and make something chilly right there. Anything else? Yes, sir. Find ways to be a better captain, leader on the field and off the field. Find better ways to be a leader and captain on or off the field. Sorry, that's a little distracting. Okay, so maybe some individual traits, right? We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Anything else, yes, sir? Uh, in my high school team, we had guys of all different abilities. Yeah. And it's creating a culture of welcoming anything that's on the rugby team is on the rugby team and not just because you may not be the best athlete or the most coordinated, not yep. kind of shunning them as not athletic. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting and oftentimes complex situation for coaches because you have such a wide range, right? You have, I just walked into, and I saw rugby, never played sports before too. I've been at ERA, I've done Wisconsin Selects, I want to go to college and do all this stuff. And you've got to find a place for each one of those people in the program. Yeah, okay. I think we'll talk a little bit about that. Hamish, anything? Uh, like building a kind of egoless or a humble, cohesive environment. Yeah. Ego is the enemy. Chocolate willing. Yeah. No, really still. Ego is tough. Because no matter what, everybody has a little bit of it. You can work as much as you want on control the controllables and not be outcome based, results driven. But deep down inside of us, we all have desire to be better, the desire to do well and have good performances, right? Um, some of the stuff we'll talk about in this is less mental skills and more about the communication process to how to break those down sometimes, right? And then you can put some other pieces in play once you build some of the framework we'll talk about into uh, saying that behavior isn't acceptable in our culture, right? Anything else? Yes, sir. I think combating, right? Like, I, I, I feel like we have a decent culture um, and we're moving to get better, but I, I want to make sure that the rest of our community understands that and doesn't have that kind of preconceived notion of old school drinking rugby and, and stuff like that. Ooh, that's the $24,000 period question, right? The, the, the sort of vision of rugby from parents of our players era. Oh my God, I had a friend who played rugby. He or she was fucking crazy, right? They always did some gnarly parties, cake stands, they did all that stuff. That's a tough one, but super easy, not super easy. I think you can overcome it by action and showing outwardly what you're about, right? Communication is a big part of that. Um, I love this photo. We did a try rugby day where we invited the kids that we got on the recruiting day to just come and try rugby for the afternoon and we just happen to have a double rainbow. So this is gold, right? I'll play rugby in Minnesota, we have great rainbows. Awesome facilities. Um, what is culture? What do you think? What, what, what is culture? Talk a little bit about our defense presentations. What do we think it's about? Derek, got an idea? Group behavior and what's acceptable and what's not. Group behaviors? Values. No go. Values, mission. Values, mission, purpose. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Like, feel when you step on the pitch, like how, how, like the kind of environment that you're creating from the moment someone steps on the pitch. Your team environment. Oh, that's a good one. That's a great one, actually. So, definition. I think this is the one I found that's the best. Team culture is made up of the values, beliefs, attitudes, behaviors shared by a team. <laughs> It's how people work together towards a common goal and how they treat each other. These could be positive and they could be negative. Is that a fair, accurate statement about what we feel about our teams that we played on or coached or been involved in? Some were good, some were great, some were shit. 
So the toxic, yeah, okay. Um, one thing I'll say, some of the things we'll talk about in here are personal. And how we're full. We've done a lot of work. Sorry, I knew it happened. Um, we got a lot of moments in 18 months, two years actually for us, where we've grown by leaps and bounds. Um, somebody recently just talked about culture and said, you carve it into the wall, your history and moments and stuff. And we're filled in Minnesota with moments in our wall where something happens, we have exponential growth, and then we have another sort of good or bad or positive or some sort of thing happened and we grow again, right, as a team. First one uh, started in 2019 where I became a head coach and we said, holy shit, we gotta do something, right? And the next big moment for us was we were playing Joey Rasmus' team in Illinois. It was a terrible day, super shitty weather, super cold, and all of us included. From the coach on down, we all included and just abandoned everything we talked about, everything you'll see here. Uh, and then COVID did, which added layers upon layers upon layers to what we were doing. However, by the time we got to COVID, I think the things that we'll talk about here, I'll give a little backstory on it, provided us a framework to come out ahead. To come out ahead at the end of it. So we're not there yet, but it's finally time for us to say we're okay. We're doing good. And that's not wins, that's not losses. That's participation, that's welcoming people of all different levels, skills, backgrounds, wherever they come from. And you'll see, I can show you actual data, I can show you physical representations of that growth, right? Um, for us, and for me as a coach, and I think a lot of you, a team environment should be a space for shared experiences and psychological safety. Okay. Shared experiences. We're all in this together. We're at practice all the time. We communicate in group text, either on WhatsApp, group me, whatever else apps are out there. Right? You spend 90% of your time at practice, connecting, or going to recruiting events, or doing all these other things. The games are only about 10%. That's the icing on the cake. That's your test. Right, that's a test of all the things you do in that other 90% work. Psychological safety, why, why would that be important to us? Just ma'am. Your head's not really not being safe. Like, if you're not mentally safe, you're not physically safe, right? Like, yeah. Um, and talking to people and practice, if your head's not in it, you're not safe, you're going to be those things Right, so we have the physical and mental uh, hazards that we can navigate as coaches and as players and as administrators and if we don't feel safe we're not going to perform our best we're not going to connect with the people around us we're not going to essentially buy in and get whatever team you're involved in whether it's rugby football basketball corporate whatever you're not going to buy in another piece of that is if someone's not feeling psychologically psychologically safe they're never going to speak up they're never going to tell you something's wrong. You're never going to have an opportunity to right those wrongs or adjust course or pivot in the world that we say today, right? So to foster that, your team culture should include your environment. What does that space look like? When you come to practice, how do we communicate with one another? How do we solve conflict? You know, how do we give feedback? How do we receive feedback? Right? One of our senior leaders on the team gives a great work on to the guys and says, you need to listen intently. Not just speak, you need to listen intently and take in what your peers are saying, what your coaches are saying, what the school is saying, for the officers, right? So there's a lot to that in terms of communication. To create this environment, to get it started, you have to have a dialogue. Okay? You have to have the ability to speak freely with one another. That's hard to build sometimes, especially with kids, especially with young athletes, right? College age young men, probably the hardest group of dudes that I've ever worked with. 
group of athletes. Right? I have I had to do a ton of work on communication. Would you agree? Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? How to put myself out there enough and put it in a position to have Nick give me feedback. And him to feel safe to give a perceived person of authority or esteem in the community some feedback and say, dude, you're not doing well right now. And I need you to be better. That's, that, that takes a lot. Like, there's a lot of hard moments, right? Like, but when you get to that point, if you build the framework, it's amazing. It's amazing, right? Um, this group right here is the first group. In this group, though, we lost five of those players within a month of them starting. Five of those. This this group, you can see on the wall there behind them, sort of the same sort of post-it situation that we have here. They created our culture. They created our culture. They sat down. Actually, Bob and I sat down when he was the president of our club. You can see Bob right there. And said, so I said, Bob, what do you want to do? Take it over as head coach. In the spring, or the spring, fall of 2018, we went to Big Ten championships, but for seventh place, 16 gophers on a bus. 16. And the kid who was the 16th wore jeans underneath his track pants because he thought he was never going to go in the game. And then we called him, called him in the game, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> and I, I'll be right there, Snacks, and he's literally trying to take his jeans off and <laughs> football cleans him off base. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. So after that, I take over as head coach. We said, we want to, we need to air things out, right? We need to get things out there on the thing. And I said, okay, God, let's do like a team culture meeting. I started reading about it, started looking it, into things. And we put up uh, some questions on the board, right? We sought out to air some grievances, right? Talk about what was good, what was indifferent, or what was really good, what was like terrible, what was what we wanted to do, like we no stone unturned in this session, right? And the analogy we use is a house. Okay, for us and for me, the thought of every rugby team in college generally has a rugby house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Place of communal living, maybe not the best sometimes. Socially, everybody comes and goes through this particular place. It's furnished with posters, furniture, science projects in the refrigerator, because we're young and we forget things, right? And you don't know where half these things come from because this house has turned over a couple times. Well, we had done that as a program. We had traditions, we had sayings, we had chants, we had a lot of stuff, and we had no idea where it came from. No idea. And what we said was, okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to take everything out of the Gopher Rugby house and we're going to refurnish the house with what we want. Okay. We, if you look, the bottom floor here in the room, that's our values. That's how we want to be seen. When people look at us, that's what they feel or see us or hear us talk, communicate, and look like when we're playing. This middle floor next to the M, those are our behaviors and those are our standards that we live by. That's what we came up with. We said we're going to do this to make sure we uphold the values and do that stuff. And then the top, these are our goals. Sort of overarching goals at the time and still applicable now that we feel if we're accomplishing them and we're shooting out for those and, and accomplishing these on some level and we keep them in view, we're going to be okay. And we're going to grow. Okay. Now, so our point over here, you could look at this and go, oh my God, there's a lot in there. Yeah, I would just say there's a lot of words, a lot of stuff up there. I think it was important for us to put everything in there because at some point it has to connect with every single person in the program on some level. For Nick's particular, Nick, which one do you connect with the most? Um, I believe. That year I wrote Swagger. But no, no, not your, which one did you connect to? Oh, the yeah. other house? Yeah. Uh, fun. Fun. Okay. 
Andy Garcia, now plays for Metro, just played for the Midwest Thunderbirds. Empty the tank. Bob Akari. Uh, lead by example, brother. Lead by example. Right? So every every person in our house takes on Brian. What do you take out? Which one's your favorite? Probably be a good teammate. Be a good teammate. Okay. Right? So we built this. And then we have we get the blessing of having a, a mental skills coach named Francesca, who came up with the idea of like, you need to have like a physical representation of the house. So that way we reinforce the values and stuff and, and get to know one another. So what we did is we created a brick ceremony. And these are our bricks from the first one we did. And this happened several weeks after the initial team culture meeting. And this is what every single person in the team at that time, coaches included, was bringing to the team and what the team could expect from them. It was a, a word representation of you as a human being. And in that we said, bring a prop or a t-shirt or something that talks about where you're from and who you are. And so we had t-shirts, we had necklaces from uh, family members that were given that were deceased, boxing posters, we've had pictures of family, like you name it, we've probably seen it through our time. And we built the house, right? We built the physical house, which is incredible in, in and of itself. And this is the spring of 2019. We came to this through the exercise I'm gonna lead you all through. Okay? You can steal the house, you can make a house yourself. That's great, you can do any symbology after this you want, but I, I'm gonna run you through a little exercise to sort of put together some ideas for, are we on the exercise? Yeah. Put together some ideas of how to start building your frameworks. Seeing what behaviors are important. What's, what values people take, right? Seeing how they want to be seen, how they want to feel. Uh, I keep saying this. So I learned this, All Black Sevens is a team I've worked with a couple times, and they literally talk about when they, people see them, how do we make them feel? What do they hear? What do they see? You know, what, is that, what does that do for them, right? So we, we put some of that into perspective here with where it's on paper to start. So what I'd like you all to do is count off into six. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six. Okay, and what we'll do is at each one, you'll have about two minutes in your group, um, right in my backpack, there's some Sharpies are right there on the table. In your group, I'd like you to start using words to describe answer, the answer to the question. Could be a small phrase too if you wanted to, Okay, so we'll have Derek start counting off at one, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, one, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> For the purpose of this exercise, we're a team. Team Oshkosh. We're new rugby club. We're here. We're trying to figure out who we are and what we're about. Okay? So group one, if you're here, group two's there, group three, group four, group five, group six. Right, can you? It's very easy. Are you taking ones over here, twos over there? Yeah, ones over here, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes. Here's a marker. Trees. This is two. I wonder if we got a stab of bacon. Yes. Here you go. Where you go? Yep. So I can write if you guys can't talk. 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 I can write if you guys can't
Thirty seconds. question that you answered the first time. Uh, now what you're going to do this time, is that the, right, the question you started with? Yes. Now what you're going to do on this time is you're going to highlight your top three to five things that have been already written on there that you agree with or you think is a very strong uh, addition or in line with what you're, what you're feeling on your initial question. Not adding, you're just looking at it. You may add one of yours if, from your original one if you want to, if you feel very if you feel very strongly about that. But put asterisk next to the ones that you do you agree with. stood out as important to you over there? Effort. Why? Uh, because everyone giving their best. Everyone giving their best. So if you were to if you were to put that into words of what your expectation is of your teammate, what would you want? Essentially to not give up even in a hard time. In relation to a game. If we're losing sixty to zero, yeah. like not to see him just with their head down and like pretty much letting the dude run over or run by. So resiliency, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Ryan, anything stand out for you over there? Fun. Fun. Why? What's the point in doing it if it's not fun? Everybody agree with that? Everyone wants to be fun. Four. Three. Four. What do you all have up there? We like synergy. Synergy? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, Jessica. Um, to me, that means I kind of had it when we were on our first one, but like when something's really working together, you're all on the same page and you're just you're in a flow state and, it, yeah. and it's cool. There's no, it's not super high, it's flow, it's just working on it. You're yeah. interconnected. You're in the flow state, right? right? You're all working together. And generally, everyone's working together when they know what. They know the framework. They right. know what you're expecting. Any trust about it. Yep. Trust. Right? Trust. And it's often put synergy on it. Anything else stand out on that one for you guys? You have effort on there too. So would you, would you agree with resilience? Yeah, we like resilience yeah. and effort would be like trying your hardest. Yeah. Like not only yeah. not giving up, but yeah. like trying your hardest. Yeah. So building capacity in one aspect and the other one or like giving the capacity of your effort in one way and then the other way is when when things are reversed you're not getting that yeah. Yeah. group two uh our top two or our they score you we were trusting your teammate humility trust your teammate humility for 
tied to us. What about trust? Why is that important? Because if you don't like trust your teammates, then you guys won't work well together as a team. And it's going to fall apart. How can you build trust in a team? It's like group experiment or group experiences and like hanging out together and doing stuff together builds trust. And I hear, some, I hear something along the lines of commitment to the group, to our goals, stuff in that, in that quote. Would commitment encompass what he's talking about? Was there a different word to move bigger? Okay. Anything else? Fitness, wellness, health, and wellness, and fitness 
a massive part of what we do these days. Right? Rugby gives us an escape from real life, from adulting. Right? Uh, how can we, how can we foster, how can we grow or adapt the situation in our current environment here to say, if you're not okay, this is an okay group to come and talk to. And how would we do that? What would you do on a daily basis or a, a weekly basis as a team to foster growing that trust so that if somebody's having a hard time, we pick them up? I think you have to be vulnerable first. You have to be vulnerable to somebody else. Then you, then that creates trust, and then they can. If, if you have, if you're strong enough to be vulnerable, then you can get somebody else um, to to trust there and, and build their relationship. Vulnerability. That's a good one, right? That's a super good one. How many times, as coaches or as players, we're at a really difficult time? Anxiety might be setting in. We might go through a little bit of depression and you know, not to share personal, but you may relate to that. And we outwardly project everything else but what we're really feeling. We project anger, we project uh, confusion, right? bitterness, uh, irritability. Right? We see that in one another. Maybe just all we're really afraid to do is say, I'm struggling. That's really tough. It starts, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, it starts with these coaches following that behavior. Saying, there are days when I'm not okay. There are days when 100% is only about my 80 or 75% capacity. And you gotta lean in to those folks that are around you. Lean into your players, lean into your staff. Trust them to catch you when you fall. The things that we're talking about here, now it's a fictional team, but we're building a network of these behaviors and standards. And we're telling each other what's important because when those moments happen, we're going to catch each other. Um, do you want to get my share? You told me a bit about those. COVID wasn't bad enough. We had a young player who was struggling. And we, uh, we decided to do some things that weren't going to be great for his life. And Bob and I found out that he had suffered what his family called an accident while traveling home to England after leaving our team the previous fall. And it was an attempt. Right, attempt to take a For two weeks, we had to figure out how we were going to tell the team. And I was beside myself because ultimately, the coach, the safety, the stuff we're talking about is the safety of our players. Everybody going home safe, everybody having a good time, everybody learning through this experience, and one of our own. May not have made it. May, may not have made it. And I had to sit. We did a recovery session on a Friday. We did yoga. We got a really good frame of mind. And we told the team. Half the team did not know this person because they were brand new. They were right in. They were coming in. And I'm sitting on a plyometric box in our gym. And I don't know what to say. It's just dead silent. And it just looks like we totally love at that moment, it validated the work we can do it. That we could stand up to one for one another. How do you would say like, hey man, it's okay, I'm gonna do it. And that was a big moment. Uh, thank you for that. Your three words didn't take away what I was feeling, but I I felt like we were going to get through it together. Now I can happily say this young man is now living in England on his own, his own apartment, full-time job, girlfriend, 
doing writing and he's thriving now. So thankfully there's a great moment there, right? But that moment of vulnerability and talking with these young athletes and coaches in our group and me expressing vulnerability before allowed him to say, hey, I'm with you, coach. So vulnerability is a massive one for me. I'm really glad you brought that up. And thanks for letting me share. I'm sorry for crying like a big slot for me. It's like, these moments are powerful. When you start building these things, and your culture is the thing that holds you up, you can get through anything. Right? You can get through anything. You might hear that. Yeah. Shit. But, okay. <laughs> Is there anything else of any of these that we're like, we're really into, we love? Yane, did you see how in the discussion, which could go a lot longer or shorter with your team, you may have teams who don't speak at all. You've got to figure out a way to talk. But can you see how you can start to see themes pop up? Start to see where people are like, I really want you to get everything you got to share and everything you got when we're in a team fire. You see something like that. I hear cohesiveness in a lot of the stuff, commitment level, right? Acceptance, low number. We need, we need to bring people in where they're at and help them figure that out. Those are all great things. Is it going? Yeah, I think it just turned on. Oh, shit. Sure. Okay. All right, let's go back to our seats. We'll, we'll chat a little bit more about this. bring them into the culture instead of them expecting, you know, I want my kids to play every game and, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So. We've done board games. Yeah. It, an important part, a big part of what, what we did here in, in the Gopher environment, right, is we, we built this and we kept it to ourselves for a while. And part of the slide that you would have seen is uh, what next, right? You get these themes, you get these behaviors, you get these standards, you whittle it down to where you say, yep, yeah, this is right where we want to be right now and, and where we want to move forward. And what we had to do is we had to go in and practice it. Right? You had to practice your culture. You had to practice your behaviors, your standards. And you had to check for understanding as a coach. I literally, three weeks after we built the house and the, the practice, I said, hey guys, what does trust, or uh, what does stay true to 600 mean? Crickets. What are our five values? Crickets. Right? Because they were just words on a wall or a wall on a banner at that point, and we hadn't actually started to practice them. Right? So I would recommend getting what the players want and, and finding out where they want to be inside their team environment and what sort of standards and behaviors they want to they want to go with, their values too, maybe some goal setting in there as well and then start practicing it, and when it's it's kind of taking off steam, then you start bringing the other folks in, right? And what ends up happening is like, parents will start hearing the statements and stuff that you talk about, right? We, we start talking about empty the tank. They see on the jersey or in our polos, the MS Forever, or empty the tank, or Sky you Ma, right? You see those, and they, they ask questions and then naturally the kids will just be like, yo, no, that means like more practice or we're in games, we're, it's easy to pull back, but empty the tank means get everything, right? And so what's happened, so over the course of this, the three years now, three years? Over the course of three years that we've built this culture, the parents are now involved, the alumni's involved. The alumni called me and said, hey, we want to change the slogan to our alumni association. We feel more like a family now than ever, can we, talk about that. I'm like, go right ahead. It's not my culture, it's their culture. Okay, so that leads me to the next point, is your role as a coach. What's your role in, in the building of culture and the practicing of it and the checking of understanding? What do you feel like that should look like? Are 
you see the wrong culture or something, somebody got acting appropriately, check. Intervene. Yeah. Intervention? Okay. It is also important to be bought in, right? Like, to be what? To be bought in. To, to be, be bought in? Ever right? do that? Like, if your players are the ones developing it, then you do also have to be bought in. I agree with what both of them are saying, but I think it's actually, like to me, building a culture means that I'm not the police captain of our culture, and I'm not the one sitting there saying, you're not following the culture. I want all the players around me to be the ones teaching the new ones, and like, it, it should be so ingrained within it that when something does go against the culture, that I can, like, if Pogo is my teammate or a player, she goes, she checks it. And I go, great, did that post <laughs> like, like that's like, it's, it's, it's everyone together and not just like, because I think if you're policing it, if you're the only one holding everyone accountable, then it's not a culture. You're facilitating. Then it's your thing. Then it's my thing. Right. I can, I can, Our when I was coaching, I would tell the girls, hey, like we can't be a party team. But if they're sneaking around on the backside and they're still a part of the team, then that's not a culture. All very great points, and I'm going to tie this all together, right? Buy in. Players build it. Actually, we all build it together. Let's say that. We build it together. So on the top of our house is we. Outwardly, you think connection, togetherness. We, for me, it's part of my personal philosophy and what I'm, my, my stroke of the brush on the paint of our house is sort of how I view looking at everything we do now. It's called win everything. And it's not about results. It's not about games. It's about attacking the things that you can attack and compete, right? It's okay to get excited. It's okay to be like celebratory of something somebody does in your team. Don't hold back. I used to be a coach. I, I'm a big, loud, boisterous guy. Those of you who've been in my presentations know it. it's constantly going. I used to be so subdued because I was told that you're going to get your team too activated and they're not going to be able to match your intensity, and then you go. So I became the stoic coach. And I sat there. I didn't say anything. And then with these guys, it changed. They responded to my vulnerability. They responded to my energy. When I was intense and fired up, you could just see them like, the hairs on the back of their neck would stand up. And so it was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm gonna be excited. I'm gonna get up. We're gonna get up. Bagamashka. Right? Our defensive call. And that that's me saying, guys, it's okay to jump off the cliff. Be who you wanna be. Like, fucking go after it. Shit, you want to do all the tests? You score, you score high on it? Good, go kill it. I'll be here to celebrate with you. Don't ever talk about winning a race to the bathroom. That's another joke. <laughs> uh, so, as a coach, I have a piece in the house. I have skin in the game, right? They've built the majority of it. I've put my input into it. And as a coach, as a head coach, at the same time, it's all about you and not about you at all. You are the culture keeper. You're the check valve, right? The Is that in line with what we want to do? Is that in line with the behaviors and standards you set? And the players go, no, or yeah, right? Coach should only, once this gets rolling, I only intervene if we really have to. But now we have a, a senior group of players and staff that uh, I just go over and say, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Do we need to like, you guys want to say something or, or do we need to have a team chat or whatever? And then they tell me, oh, coach, we got it. Or yeah, coach, I think it's probably a good idea. We have a chat. And then I intervene if they need me to do that. But do you think that's how we do that? Yeah. Okay. It feels like that. Just make sure. um, if you don't buy in, if you don't believe your house is a house of cards. If your players catch you not doing the behaviors they asked of themselves, you're gone. You're done. Respect, credibility, is not one. Now, you 
don't create a culture that's so strict that you can't forgive and, and learn through that stuff together. But like, you've got to be able to practice what you preach, practice what they want to preach. That's the key. It is theirs. And you're just there to remind them sometimes. So now, every year, we or every semester, after the two the, the two week mark from the beginning of the semester, we hold a team culture meeting. And they present. They put the house out, and each one of us has a wee bit piece of it, and we talk about it, even Ryan and Hannah and our, our other staff members and our senior players, they all get up and talk about a piece of it, facilitate a discussion, say this is what we you know, this is who we are. This is what you know, you've been hearing these terms, you've been hearing this stuff, this is what it is. And the players that have come in and we're trying to accept them and, and gain them into our program, gain them into our community, that's the moment for them to say, I'm in, or let me think about it, or no. And it's okay if they say no. How we commit that is we present our training jerseys. You get your gopher training jersey, it's a reversible, gold one side, root on the other. And from that moment on, at that team culture meeting, that's what we wear to training. We look the part, one unified group. It looks like Goldie the Gopher took a shit in our dog. <laughs> it's awesome, right? But I'm now just part of it. Um, it's a really tough thing at times because you want to drive culture. That's the other big piece, you can't force culture. You can't force things, right? Who's seen Fiji sing? Voices of angels, yeah? Okay. The other Polynesian Pacific Island teams have brought singing in. Kiwis brought it in, and I was like, man, that's really cool. It's a really good connection piece. And I tried singing songs with the Coast Guard rugby team. I was coaching the sevens program at that time. First song went great, and then all of a sudden, we had guys whose egos got in the way, Hamish. No, man, we're singing a song right now. And they sang the worst songs, and people hated it, and I learned a very valuable lesson. You cannot force culture. It's organic. It grows on its own. One piece of our house that's not in there, but it's it's very much ingrained in what we do every day is competition. Compete, right? The word competition is not smash your opponent. It's not decimate everybody. It means to strive to achieve that which another is achieving, trying to achieve. And through our team, we figured out competing against the best and trying our best will make us better, right? And Nick had a great analogy the other day. Yeah, he stood up in front of the team and said, what did we say? I said the culture is like a, an organism. Like, you know, it's got little cells, little pieces, everyone's a little piece of it. Um, but you gotta be selfless, you know, to be part of the organism. And if you push the cell harder, what happens? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. If, uh, if you push, know your teammates in practice, they'll go harder, uh, they'll get better. And the cells grow. Symbiotic. Symbiotic relationship, right? So that piece become part of the house, but we don't have to put it on the wall. It's just part of what we do, and it morphs and it molds to, to sort of the team environment that we're in. Right? Would you guys all agree, every year the team shifts kind of a little bit? There's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a flex and stuff, so you got to be able to flex a little bit with it too. Are there any questions? we got about five minutes. Sorry that my thing went down, but can you see how to facilitate these discussions and bring out some of those things? That was my ultimate goal, was to try to get that facilitation exercise. Yeah. So you, you said when you were starting to kind of figure out how you wanted to bring a culture, what were good inspirations for you to like, like where did you learn, oh. like how did you study for culture? How did I study for culture? Um, I consume content like nobody's business. Podcasts, books, um, top three books right now I would read and I would recommend and I would give out personally. Culture Code by Daniel Coyle, where he talks about setting an environment, building it up. He also has The Talent Code, which is about the athlete and individual itself. I think that's the best book out there, better than Legacy. Legacy's toilet paper compared to that one. Um, Owen Eastwood, who's a high performance coach, out of, uh, he's a Kiwi, but he lives in the UK. He's worked with like South Africa cricket, the England football team, the Harlequins in the Premiership. He just wrote a book called Belonging. And that book, oh my God, is impressive. It talks about the concept of Papa Papa, which is a Maori tradition 
uh, it's a Maori uh, ancestral sort of knowing your lineage, right? Your lineage is a straight line from your ancestors to you, to your children, to their children, whatever, but also Papa Papa extends outwardly. So as you become part of a team and you feel like you're belonging, we're all linked arm and arm, and it is powerful. <coughs> that book is incredible. Uh, and then I recommend Originals and Think Again by Adam Grant. Just to start getting to think about your environment, the way you speak to each other, and how to like communicate, I think those books are great. Um, Podcast-wise, The Magic Academy by Rusty Earnshaw and Fletch out of the UK. They have many, many coaches on there. Owen Eastwood, Cody Royal, a lot of other guys come on there, and they talk about culture and performance and education and how to deliver messaging and like how to create mental skills and all that stuff. I think that was good. And Cody Royal is where there's wall interviews a lot of high performing coaches, business people, and athletes, and then uh, Talking Performance with Jay Parker, I think is another great podcast, right? Awesome stuff. Um, just really good, good stuff. But actually, the Owen Eastwood just was on Cody Royal's podcast, which is a great crossover. Rusty Earnshaw was also on Cody Royal's podcast, and Cody Royal was on Jay Carter's, and Rusty Earnshaw was on there. Another guy named Aaron Walsh is a great, uh, outlet on LinkedIn. Um, go to Twitter and look up these coaches. Just hit them with a question and they'll answer. Oh, if you guys want to take a picture, you can. Um, got books here that I would recommend. One book that doesn't seem like it applies to rugby or coaching, but it's called The Biggest Bluff by Maria Konnikova. She was a writer for The New Yorker, taught herself how to be a professional poker player. She's now one of the best poker players in the world. And the book is all about how she mastered herself, mastered anxiety, and performance anxiety, and risk aversion. Amazing, amazing book. I read it in three days. I can't recommend that enough. Um, what else do I have here? Tough Stuff by Cody Rook. This book is a little flying under the radar here in the United States, but it's the seven hard truths about being a head coach. In fucking incredible. You'll read that book and be like, oh my God, there's another person out there like me. And then you realize we're all here together. You know, it talks about the sort of struggles we go through. And the ultimate goal there is mental well-being and health and wellness of coaches. Right? You see so many, so much turnover in professional sports, and like we all go through it on some level when we get out to the lower levels. Who else have on there? And, yeah, oh, David Sharkey. Sharkey does theming. He does team culture. Uh, swimming or teaching sharks is his Twitter. <coughs> Amazing dude, puts out some great stuff. He started with how to defeat toxic masculinity in your programming and all this stuff, and then he's moved into team culture. He works with like La Rochelle, he works with some other uh, uh, Pro 14 and, and European team up over there. Amazing dude. All of these people will hit you back if you hit him on Twitter. David Sharkey actually saw our house one day, I posted it, and he goes, What's that? And then I had this long dialogue about what it is, and he was like, holy shit, that's awesome. And I was like, thank you for validating me. That was awesome. <laughs> um, I'll leave this here if anybody wants to take a picture of it. Uh, we got the college panel now. People, got any other questions, anybody? No? Okay. Sweet. Thank you.